Now we're going to look at the Maxwell Boltzmann speed distribution of particles. Usually we use it to describe the behavior of gas particles. This is a view of the data booklet and these are the formulas that are in section 3.1 and 3.2. On the top left hand corner we have the equation for the specific heat capacity. We also have a specific latent heat and on the right hand side we talk more about the modeling of a gas. We're going to look particularly at the equation on the bottom right hand corner. This is the equation that we're looking at. Now I can tell you a little bit about the ones on the left. They're all to do with things we can measure directly, the mass of the object, the temperature and so on. And so these are uh, a macroscopic properties that we can measure. So these are macroscopic properties. Also on the right that PV is equal to NRT. This is also a way of looking at macroscopic properties such as pressure, volume and uh, temperature. Now the equation that we're looking at, the maxwell boltzmann equation, is also macro which means it's looking at temperature for example but on the other hand it also has microscopic properties. The kinetic energy there is the average kinetic energy of the particles of the gas and we can't measure those directly. This equation is very important because it basically gives us the link between what we're able to measure macroscopically to what is actually going on microscopically. The link between the temperature and the average kinetic energy of the particles and as you can see basically if you double the temperature you are going to double the average kinetic energy of the particles. Now if we do a graph of the number of particles at a particular speed um, against the speed you get a graph which looks a bit like this. Now what we can see from this are, are certain features and let's list them. First of all different temperatures have different curves. They basically have the same area because the total area under each curve gives you the total number of particles. Also it goes to the origin. What this tells us is that there are some particles that are going very very slowly or almost close to zero meters per second. Now you might notice that as the temperature increases the graph changes in the following ways it basically broadens out and it flattens. Also it extends to higher speeds and you find that as the temperature increases the average kinetic energy increases too. For example you can see that when we have a thousand Kelvin the average molecular speed is a thousand meters per second. When you have a temperature between 100 and 300 Kelvin, this is closer to 500 meters per second. So, all of the graphs go through the origin. The coal gas has particles which are basically moving slower than the particles in the hot gas. The hot gas, the particles move uh, quickly on average. And of course, you can see by looking at uh, this area here that indeed some of the particles in the 100 Kelvin gas um, are actually mo moving faster than the average for the 300. But it's basically a statistical analysis here. We're looking at the average. Now this is um, Maxwell Boltzmann's uh, speed distribution equation. Ek is equal to 3 over 2 k times by t. This is the average kinetic energy. This is Boltzmann's constant and this is the temperature. So basically the average kinetic energy is proportional to the temperature. Now here we have the equation again as it's written in the data booklet. This is the average kinetic energy of the particles. This is Boltzmann's constant. Now Boltzmann's constant is 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23 joules per Kelvin. R is a universal gas constant which is 8.31 joules per Kelvin per mole. And A 
is Avogadro's constant, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 per mole. Tells you how many particles are in a mole. And you may notice that these equations are basically the same thing. If, you, if I highlight on the left side, you have Kb there. On the right side, you have Rna. These are interchangeable, basically because Kb, Boltzmann's constant, is equal to R over N, the universal gas, gas constant, divided by Avogadro's constant. Now let's look at a question. What is the average speed of the hydrogen molecules on the Earth? Let's say the temperature of the Earth is around 300 Kelvin. The mass of a hydrogen molecule is, let's say, two times 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms, because uh, it's two protons. And we use this equation. So let's substitute those values in. 3 over 2 times um, the Boltzmann constant times by 300. And we end up with 6.21 times 10 to the negative 21 joules. We want to find that what is the velocity of that. So we need to know the mass of that, which we have. So we rearrange this equation to have V squared is equal to 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the mass, which gives us 3.7 times 10 to the 6 meters per second, all squared. So the average velocity is 1928 meters per second. Now this is um, a particular average, the RMS value average, because it's basically taken from the average of the kinetic energy. And to get the velocity from the kinetic energy, you have to square root it. So it's called the root mean square. So it's the, it's the root of the, the, the mean value, let's say, for the kinetic energy. And if we look at this, we can see that the, basically the root mean square is a little bit higher than the average speed, and it's uh, even higher than the most probable speed, which is the, 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 the modal value, let's say. Now notice that even though this is the average speed, there are many particles at any temperature that are still moving faster than that. This is just an average value. Now we have a nasty, nasty question. This was actually in the exam for um, the November 2016 exam, and it was horrid. But we'll look at this one. An ideal gas of n molecules is maintained at a constant pressure p. The graph shows how the volume v of a gas varies with absolute temperature T. What is the gradient of the graph? What is basically the change of V divided by the change of T? Now, which one do you think it would be? Now, if I were to do this, my first view would be, let's think about what is V against T? What equation do we have that relates volume against temperature? Well, this is one. PV is equal to NRT. If we rearrange it, we have V is equal to nr over p times by t. So which one of these answers is it? So the gradient is basically nr over p. Now is that correct? Is the answer b? Now the problem is small n is the number of moles, not capital N. Capital N is the number of molecules. So the, the terms are not defined correctly. So we're not there, I'm afraid. The answer is not b. In fact, in the, um, exam in the examiner's report, um, probably eight times as many people went for this answer than they did the correct one, to give you an idea how many people went for answer B. To be able to see the whole picture, we have to look at these three equations again, and we need to look at all three to be able to sort this out. Now, the first equation here is N which is the number of moles, is equal to the number of particles divided by Avogadro's number. The gradient is, um, we know it's nr over p times divided by uh, na, because that's basically, because n divided by na is equal to small n. Uh, we're still not there because this is not one of the options. So what's the next step? 
we've looked at the first formula, we looked at the second. Now we need to look at the third formula. Look at the third formula and see if there's um, another term that we can put in there. Now I said before that Kb is equal to R over Na and that's what we need to substitute now. R over Na, which is the gas constant divided by Avogadro's constant, is the, the, the Boltzmann's constant. So we have to substitute that in there. So the gradient is equal to NK divided by P, which is equal to uh, answer C, and that's the correct answer. This was a very tough question, I think. All the teachers that I saw on the OCC, the uh, Online Curriculum Center, were, were complaining about this, saying it was far too difficult to be able to do this in 90 seconds, because that's the time you have. But there you have it. What's important now is that you understand how to get there. And that's that.